This morning, I was sourcing content for you guys on Hollywood Unlocked, and I came across Pastor Carlton Funderburg. He is a Kansas City pastor who recently went viral for a sermon he released concerning his church members. Now, I'll get to that in a minute, but now I want to kind of talk about the pastor. He's a young man. Uh, now it's questionable about what his, um, you know, his preferences are, if you get what I'm trying to say, and we'll talk about that also, but, uh, he's a young, vibrant minister from what I can see, but also he is what I would consider to be an entitled man of God. But now let me kind of play the viral clip in which he talks down to his parishioners for not giving enough money. And then we will get into the apology right after. See, that's how I know you still poor, broke, busted and disgusted because of how you've been honoring me. I'm not worth your McDonald's money. I'm not worth your Red Lobster money. I ain't worth your St. John Nick. Y'all can't afford it. No, how? I ain't worth y'all Louis Vuitton. Come on. I ain't worth your Prada. Come on. I'm not worth your Gucci. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Mother, ooh, I'm saying this, and I promise you, Deacon, it is not with respect of want. I'm saying it because I want you to understand just what God is saying. I even found out that Movado, you can buy a Movado watch in Sam's. Yes, you can. And y'all know I asked for one last year. Here it is the whole way in August. I still ain't got it. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Let me kick down the door and talk to my cheap sons and daughters. So guys, let's play the apology of what he said about the clip. And then we'll break it down. Good evening. My name is Carlton Funderburg. I'm the senior pastor of Church of the Well right here in Kansas City, Missouri. I want to take this moment to address the now viral video clip of me from a sermon given August the 7th, 2022. Though there is context behind the content of the clip, no context will suffice to explain the hurt and anguish caused by my words. I've spoken to those I am accountable to and have received their correction and instruction. I have also privately apologized to our church who has extended their love and support to me. I'm privileged to do life with them. The video clip does not reflect my heart or my sentiments toward God's people, yet that's not discernible in the clip. Therefore, I offer this in sincere apology to you today. No context could erase the words I used. I apologize to all who have been hurt, angered, or in any way damaged by my words. The zeal of any presentation must be tempered with love and respect, and that was not displayed. I apologize to the church at large for any undue scrutiny I have subjected you to. I apologize to every preacher and pastor who must stand up under the controversy that I have caused. To those who know and love me, thank you for your support. To those who now know me, because of this video clip, I regret that your first impression of me is one of anger, hate, and resentment. My, ac my actions and my words are inexcusable. I offer no justification or defense. That moment was mishandled and mismanaged. I deeply regret this moment, and I solicit your prayers and your forgiveness as we grow forward. Thank you. God bless you. Go with God, and he'll go with you. So we talk about entitled women all of the time here on my channel. But now we have entitled people that are content creators on YouTube, the Hit the cash app specialist though. Why didn't you join the Patreon? I have so much, you know, knowledge for you guys or, you know, whatever, you know, like 
th- those people who try to act like they deserve something that, you know, they just don't have, in my honest opinion, right? That, that's that's on you. But the, the church is on a different level, all right? It is what it is. We, we, we've seen it and, and we feel it. But now I want to get into the whole personal situation of why did you choose to pastor? He said stuff like you don't des- you don't want to give me your red lobster money. You don't want to give me your Prada money. Is is this about you? And see, we got to talk about this as as people on social media or as whatever preachers or whatever. You decide to do it because you want to do it. Nobody owes you anything. We got to start stop thinking about that when we're talking about building communities in the religion or on social media communities, things like that. We need to offer value for our subscribers value for money in the business world that's what it's about if you're a pastor you want people to, to, to donate and they shouldn't be donating to you because you want a mobile to watch they should be donating to the ministry so we know with his attitude where the money is going in the ministry it's going to him and then you have the idiots in the back who are, who are, who are egging them on but i'll get to that in a minute you choose your position i want to talk about one time howard cosell was um interviewing Joe Namath in the 70s and at the time Joe Namath was the highest paid player in the NFL in the position of quarterback was the highest paid player in the NFL so he was the highest paid player and a quarterback and that's still the same case today quarterbacks are typically the highest paid people in the NFL and so the question was to Joe Joe you are the highest paid person in the NFL um people who play other positions believe that you shouldn't be the highest paid player or quarterbacks what do you think about that and Joe Namath said to that well I pick my position, they pick theirs. If you are a pastor preaching the word of God, understand that you are a servant. You serve the community and the parish in which you preach in. It's not about you. It's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you come to YouTube or you go into the personal black business sector or the private sector, nobody owes you anything. You get up every day, you compete for what you get, and you try to offer value. I see it here all the time with content creators trying to shame people into giving them money. Now, don't get me wrong. I do feel that as far as, you know, in the black male sector, that, you know, we should support guys who have good stuff. I'm always lobbying for guys like the Daily Wrap-Up crew to get more support because they're good. We should be more uh, supportive and less apathetic for guys who are giving us quality. In the daily wrap-up crew, I believe we should be showering them with all the kind of support because we know that they're going to do something with it. But now, on average, guys go out of their way to make guys, you know, feel bad for not giving to them. And then, and for the, and then call people d- dusty and broke for not giving to them. So if they give you the money, what are you going to do? deal with it? Nothing. And it's despicable. He should be sat down. All right? And you have the nerve to talk to people like that. And people actually believe they deserve something. And then we talk about women being entitled. When you have preachers who are entitled, you got YouTubers who are entitled, TikTokers who are entitled, and you feel that somebody should give you something because you have a few people. You're not better than anybody else. You, When you are a man, especially a man in the Christian church, and you are a leader, you want to make changes in the community. You want to make changes in your, in your industry. You get out there and you work with people. You make people see a vision that embodies everybody else. You have to serve people. It's all about serving people. We can't get around that. The best products out there, Apple, Microsoft, uh, Adobe, uh, Rode, NVIDIA. Obviously, I'm talking about a lot of tech stuff, right? But even waste management, Walmart. These people serve consumers. That's why we love them. If the if your church isn't giving you what you sh- should be getting, it, one of the reasons you're not offering enough value. And it shouldn't be about that anyway. We got to learn how to start offering value to people and stop getting mad when they don't want to get a, give it to us and start shaming folks, making folks feel bad about the fact they don't want to do it. You, They don't want to do it usually, not all the time, but usually because you're not giving value. And that's something that black men got to work at, giving value for people in the black community for their money. So guys, what do you think? It's your boy, O'Shea Duke Jackson, back at it again, the episode of Celebrity Junk. I'm out.